Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. In preparation for FIFA 22, I want to take a look at the best supplementary website to FIFA Ultimate Team, and that is footbin.com. Basically, most of you guys watching this video know about footbin, but what I want to do today is, again, just go through the so many ways that footbin can help you make coins during the entire year of FIFA 22. They added some new features last year that gave even more information to the user on prices, on graphs, on sale prices, the footbin tracker, and just the uh, past sales history on a lot of cards. And they continue to add new features, which just makes this website the king of FIFA websites. It really is. There's Foothead out there and there's FootWiz. Those are both great websites. But a lot of people would agree that Footbin is just king in this area. They just have got it down. There were so many features, and I want to take a look with you guys today at a lot of these features. Now, of course, you're seeing in here they're adding a lot of FIFA 22 cards. We're going to look at some FIFA 21 cards today as well just to kind of, I guess, refresh ourselves at the many things this website is capable of, man. Seriously, it blows my mind every single time I get on here how much stuff is on here. So, First, let's start off with a couple things that were very popular in FIFA 21. Again, this is footbin.com. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Not a hashtag ad. By the way, footbin, I'm all here if you want to be about that, but not uh, nothing is in the writing as of, as of now. Anyways, let's go. FIFA 22 popular players. This became very popular. Very popular, ironically, inside of FIFA 21 because this was an easy way to see which cards people were looking at. Usually before FIFA 21, we didn't look at this too much, but it really became something that a lot of people used to trade with last year, right? Because it shows you the top, I think it's like 50 or 100. Yeah, the top 100 cards. Um, basically, the, the players get, that get on this writ list are players that get hits on their website, right? So this is Footbin updating this hottest players list or popular players list by the cards that are getting clicked on the most or searched up the most on Footbin.com. And that's why players show up here. But this is just a great place to see which cards people are interested in looking at their price or looking at their graphs um, or just, you know, since people use Footbin for a lot of different reasons, you see a lot of random cards just all of a sudden come up here to the top of the list. People just do random research on Footbin, so you'll see random cards pop up to the top of the list. Or, uh, you know, like uh, Silas, the big the big man last year um, made popular by Mr. Danny Ahrens, right? He was up here a lot, and that was because there's a lot of hype around that item. So this popular players list is a great place to look. This is a tab that I almost always have open when I'm streaming, when I'm trading, just to see what players other people are looking at because then you get to see where the demand is on the game. So that was something that was a bit bigger in FIBA 22 than in years past. Basically what I'm going to do to kind of lay it out a little bit is go down through and not go through every single link inside of these tabs at the top, but I'm going to take you through some of the most important and also some of the most hidden and forgotten about things about this website. So popular players list number one, right? It's on the home page a little bit, but if you click on the full link right here on the drop down, players drop down, popular. I always have this tab open. I would recommend you guys do that too. Second one under the players tab that is just so very usable and useful is the team of the weeks tab. This is going to give you every single team of the week or promo team since team of the week one and thereafter, right? So of course, there are tons and tons and tons of special cards. But as you guys know, since we have more and more cards released every year, it's very hard to keep track of them. This page is perfect for that especially if you're looking to like do a team of the week investment or invest in a special card that is going out of packs this is a great place a lot of people use this link and use this to memorize prices for fluctuation trading so they'll go in here and they'll memorize let's say it's team of the week seven and they'll memorize basically every week and they'll say okay uh this harry kane rule breakers card is 26k you know what if i see him get down to 22 i'm gonna buy one i know i can probably sell it i like 28 to 29,000 coins, stuff like that, right? Looking at the graphs, which we haven't even talked about yet, but I want a second. But this Team of the Week tab is just so handy. It puts all of the different squads as we get more and more promos every year into one centralized location. So big, big fan of this page. Nothing new, just a really, really, really useful page on the website. So that is, again, under the Players tab, Team of the Weeks. Uh, FIFA 21 players. Now, what I'm going to do right now is actually something that is useful for the beginning of FIFA 22 is going under this players tab, clicking the first link, FIFA 21 players. When the FIFA 22 full database comes out, obviously Footbin will be updated for the FIFA 22 cards. 
that are out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under version. I'm going to scroll down to gold. And I'm going to go gold non-rare because basically what I'm going to do is show you guys how you can do some research in the early stages of FIFA 22 to find out what non-rare golds, what rare golds, some basically SBC cards that are being used for the advanced SBCs, hybrid league of nations, hybrid nations, hybrid leagues, and you know, look at find some cards that are maybe expensive that you can trade with on this game. So boom, go gold non-rare. We can sort by position, nation, league. I'm gonna sort by nation, popular. Let's go Portugal. And let's go for position. So let's say Portugal center backs, non-rares. Uh, at the beginning of the game last year, I definitely traded with this guy, Caracal. I definitely traded with um, Ruben Semedo. Like he would, I could buy him at like 600, 700 coins on bid, sell him for like 1.4, 1.5K like two hours later because of SPC Solutions. So this is a great place to do research in this players tab. You can, you can sort by version, position, nation, league, uh, the skills, the weak foot, the stats, the price, uh, literally everything you can imagine. You can sort by the how the freaking height and weight on this thing, man. Crazy. Um, so definitely use this page for a lot of research purposes. It's great for that. Uh, and that's why I wanted to show you guys this, especially at the beginning of the game. If Or if you're just looking, you're like, man, I really need a, a prem center back for my team. Let's go positions, center back, leagues. Top five Premier League, like, oh man, who am I going to use as a prime center back? And boom, it'll list out all the Premier League center backs under your filter. So love that page right there, the FIFA 21 players, which of course will be FIFA 22 under this players tab once again. Now, diving a little bit deeper in, let's go to PGP. This is something that I haven't seen used very often later game, but early game, it's very similar to the popular page. You're going to see a lot of cards on this page that are very, very used. And basically what this this is, is if I scroll down and open up a new window without my filters already on it, it's just gonna show you just like the players tab. But what's different about PGP is it says right here, PGP represents player game performance. PGP is based on game statistics taken from the players on the market. Values are average per game. We're not too worried about goals and assists, but it is a good way. You go in here and you say, man, uh, this Cristiano Ronaldo striker 99 Summer Stars version 1.21 goals per game that can kind of give you an idea of a, if a card's really op in game um, to be completely honest you can use that but what i like to use this for is clicking by games and you can see the cards that have been used the most this year in fifa this is kind of like the popular page especially early on in the first two months or so three months or so you really can narrow it down and see what cards people were using a lot especially with the gold items right so of course we'll see the popular page but the player game performance actually gives you some numbers to look at with the number of games played, which of course this number can't be 100% accurate, but it's crazy to see how many games played these cards can get over the course of the year. So that is the PGP player game performance link right there. Now let's move on and talk about this screen because we are used to this screen right here. We look at a card, we see the price on PlayStation, on Xbox, and on Origin slash PC. There's so much information in here, it's ridiculous, right? Games played, goals, assists, what we just looked at on the PGP page, price trends, their next match, if it's a live card or a ones to watch or anything like that, you can see it's kind of behind my face cam right now at the moment, but it tells you who they're playing in their next match. Of course, we look at the price, you can see the next five listings, the next four listings, which is really dope for seeing if, if a card like this, Renato, on Xbox is undercut, you know, 55K, it looks like 63,000 coins is you know a couple cards away you might be able to sell him 63 64,000 coins. Well, if we're trying to find a trade like that, this market sales history is one thing that was new that was added last year during the year that is incredible. This is absolutely incredible for tracking sale prices. Now, it's not 100% perfect. I'll be the first one to tell you it's not 100% perfect. Some of these sales do get missed especially on day one promo days. But this is so incredible to see. We'll look at it so much this next year. But take a look for this 84 rated Renato Sanchez card. We look down the list on PlayStation prices. I'm have i on PlayStation, so I have Footbin set to PlayStation. 44,000 coins, it sold. Uh, that was literally 40 minutes ago from right now. 52,000 coins sold seven minutes before that, right? 10,000 on open bid, wow. So this is the cool part about this. You can see where people had bought the card either on bid as you can see here, it's a bid or on a buy it now or a snipe. 
or just to buy at outright price. So that's why this sales auctions history is so useful to see where cards have actually sold at if you're fluctuation trading. This is really, really big for icons. I use this for so many icon trades last year, seeing cards fluctuate up in price. And, and like, you can look at a graph and say, okay, this Renato Sanchez goes between, you know, 42K and 51K. Normally on Monday, he was down at 48. He went up to 60, right? Or 70, right? But then I'm like, okay, do we, did he really go up to 70? Did he really sell there? And as I look at the daily graph, we go back, can I go back to Monday? I don't know if I can. 51K, 38,000 coins on a snipe. 60K, boom, he did it, 60K. So there you go, right? 67K on Monday. So that would give you 79K, look at that. Now it's also end game, so some cards are really rare and nobody's trading, so there's deals everywhere. But this is a really, really, really cool tool that will allow you to have some more confidence and do more research when you're trying to flip a card in a fluctuation trade because you can see what people have paid for it in the past. Huge, huge addition last year to, to Footbin. Absolutely love it. Also on this page, you've got so many different modes. I don't even know what half these things do. I love the generations button. It pulls up a quick little reference to all the special cards that that player has had in their past, dating back to like FIFA, I think FIFA 10, FIFA 11. It goes all the way back to the beginning of, of time for FIFA Ultimate Team. You can compare cards, put them in a squad builder, similar links. And this is a big one as well. The thumbs up and the thumbs down. I, I like Renato Sanchez. I'm going to give him a thumbs up. 5,969 thumbs up. This is what we call the hype gauge. We talk about this a lot in the live streams. The hype meter or the hype gauge. This is where I look to see, especially if a card's on the popular page, to see how many thumbs up or thumbs down that it has. Um, now, some of these FIFA 22 cards, they don't have a lot of thumbs up or thumbs down. But if you take a look at some of the FIFA 21, which actually, like the whole entire popular page right now is... FIFA 22 cards. Um, yeah, these are literally all FIFA 22 cards. Crazy. But you will see that a lot of cards get thumbs up and thumbs down. And that's a great, great measure and meter of hype and how people, especially for SBCs and objectives, if people think that it is worth it to complete that. So that's a very, very crucial part. Also, especially when I think of like investing in Team of the Week cards, I look at the thumbs up and I look at the games played as we head through the week and as those cards are in packs just to see how uh, hyped up some of those cards are. And of course, another great tool of Footbin is you can test out and say, okay, what chemistry style is most popular for this Renato Sanchez? 49% of people voted Shadow, 25% Gladiator, right? So you can say, what are other people using? What are other people saying you should put on this card? Uh, and then you go down here and you can actually see what the community is doing. So kind of interesting, right? To see that sort of stuff down there. And also I'm gonna put this out there. When there's these, you know, like some of these things, like the thumbs up and, and the votings, and as we get into SPCs, I'll show you another thing where it's like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, interact with this, totally. Like when you're on Footbin, interact with this stuff because that's just gonna help the general, all of us, get a better idea. If you thumbs it up and you're not somebody who usually thumbs it up, if you're somebody who doesn't usually uh, click the columns in order to vote, I'm gonna vote shadow, right? Boom, I just voted shadow, boom. Bingo, there we go. Or if like, if you're voting on an SBC to vote it up or down, like vote with that stuff, right? Get involved and that just helps out the entire community and gives us a better picture if everybody gets involved and does it rather than just waiting to see the results, right? So that's just my little two cents on that. But info, traits, I mean, seriously, this website has got it freaking all, man. Now, of course, we looked at the graphs, but we can revisit the daily graphs, the hourly graphs, there's so many different tools you can do here. You can like make a text box around this and say, man, you know, at this time, I want to make this square. I don't even know how to do it. I don't ever mess with this stuff, but you can make a PDF of this graph. You can like print it out if you want to show your friends or make a school project or paper about it. I don't even know. There's so many different tools you can do. It's, it's like a stock graph, graph that you can like edit, zoom in on, all sorts of crazy things that I don't even mess with because this is all I need to do right here is point it around. Look at the different points in the graph. Every hour updates price. Usually, this is about average. About every 10 minutes or so, a price gets updated on Footbin. Now, sometimes at the very, very beginning of the year, if you if you look back, like let's search Gold Usman Dembele. If you take a look at some of these cards from early in the year in FIFA 21, their graphs are real messed up. Like last year at the beginning of the year, there was a couple days where uh, I believe the web app came out on the 30th of September and day one was October 1st. 
And let me find another card. I think Rashford was extinct for maybe he wasn't. I don't remember, but I know that there were some prices on Flipbin that were messed up last year at the beginning of the year. So just be careful when you're looking at last year's graphs for FIFA 21 at the very beginning of the year because I think there were some Flipbin glitches. They were having a hard time for whatever reason for a little bit, like getting accurate player prices. So just be careful when you're going and out and looking at some of that stuff. But Let's progress through something else. We look through this page, right? Again, a lot of you guys know this is a view that you see a lot because you're looking at a card's price, you're looking at the sales history, but hopefully you guys are learning some of the things I'm talking about today and are taking something from it. Now, one of the other big places I use a lot is SPCs. I use this for research, right? You can go foot 21, drop down, go back to old FIFAs. There's new expired, expiring SPCs. And then also you can upvote and downvote these SBCs. So we had a 92 plus icon moments player pick repeatable that was released. 91% downvote, but only 100 votes, man. I'm going to downvote this too. I'm going to put my vote in there. Let's go. Uh, so vote on this stuff, man. But it is a nice another metric to see, again, how much these SBCs cost, right? This page is really useful for seeing how much SBCs cost, if it's repeatable, non repeatable, how many days it's out for. Um, you can then click on the SBC. Like I love doing this with the icon player SBCs is clicking into here and seeing their price fluctuations over time going down here, clicking daily. Boom. This Vera SBC was 1.3 mil. It went all the way up to 2 mil when fodder exploded at the beginning of September. And now it's back down to 1 million coins. So I love looking at like, especially for a player of the month or an icon SBC that is out for a long time. It's really, really fun to follow some of those graphs. Um, which is down below the bottom of every single SBC that is in here. Footbin does incredible work, man. Again, that's what I'm, every time I click around this website and just mess around, which I would encourage you to do 100% with some of this new stuff you may be learning today. Uh, I love it. It's so fantastic, and I, my mind is blown every single time. So that's part one of SBCs. Now, part two, again, one of my other favorite pages on this entire game is the cheapest players by rating. We're going to go up to this little SBC um, what would you call that image up here drop down to cheapest players by rating and boom 81 all the way up to like 90 whatever i think they even have it to like 96 98 they have it 98 wow it's crazy but it's really useful for the fodder right it's really useful to just kind of get a sense all right 83s are 3k at the moment that's pretty low 84s are 4 85s are 5k with this all the stuff is really low at the moment to be completely honest but especially during the major part of the year carval hall of fever 22 is an 85 rated card right so it's very useful to track sbc fodder prices um and just kind of have them all in one place people all also use this tab to go and buy players for SBCs. So when an SBC comes out, a lot of times you can trade with this as well. Some of the, the players that are on the bottom here, like Chesney, it says he's 14K, the cheapest 80, well, that's, that's incorrect. Let's say this Griezmann's 14,000 coins and there's, um, you know, eight, 9K is like the cheapest 87. You know, Griezmann might actually drop, drop down to like seven, eight, nine thousand coins, he might get into an SBC solution. He'll go right back up to 14. So you can trade with SBC solutions using this this screen right here. And that's something that I'll mention off of this as well, which we're gonna talk about this a lot in the coming days. But the advanced SBCs, hybrid leagues, hybrid nations, right? We click in here all the time, click on completed challenges, trade with SPC solutions. To see which one people are obviously going to click on the cheapest one at the top and that is never the cheapest spc because that's the one people think that is the cheapest but it never is because everybody is buying these cards so you just have these solutions that are fluctuating up and down the chart based off of okay people started buying this squad it's going to get more expensive the prices will update and it's going to slide down the list and nobody goes all the way to the bottom to look at the list so these ones that are at the bottom get cheap because nobody's buying them they get listed up and boom, now they're at the bottom of the list and it just continually flip flops like that. Great profits to be made with that. But also uh, just, you know, if you're coming in here to find an SBC solution, just go to the middle, right? Just go to the middle or, you know, click around and you actually look up some player prices, take the extra five to 10 minutes and do that. Maybe save yourself a little bit of coins in an SBC instead of just blindly following a solution. But that's a little bit about SPC solutions inside of this website again man i'm i feel like i'm only halfway through but i'm, I'm over halfway through what i'm going to talk about but there's just so much stuff on this freaking website bro it's insane okay next thing 
Footbin Tracker. This was also brand new last year. This is perfect. It's very similar to what we looked at here with the market sales history. It basically is market sales history and the player's graph, but you can customize it to your trade. So we're going to use our Renato Sanchez as an example. I'm going to add a Renato Sanchez and just say here that I bought one of these for, let's say, 40,000 coins at auction. Okay. This is now in my auction summary, current trade summary. Boom. I paid 40K. Right now, it's calculating after tax. I can sell it at 50,000 coins because its lowest bin is 50,500. My unrealized profit and loss is basically 8K profit if I sold it right now. There's a sell button over here. Boom. I can click that and it marks it as sold. This is a great way if you're sitting down and you're going to trade for like 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes and you can't just, you know, remember in your head what you bought the player for, how, you know, how long ago you bought them. This is a great little tool that if you have a computer up, I don't know if they can do it on mobile. I think it's only on the PC, but you can go in here, add the trade, or it's also just great for research, right? You can see again, you bought this at 40,000 coins, boom, a lot of sales in the 50K range. Yeah, you give it a little bit of time. I'll make profit on this Renato Sanchez. So the graphs, the sales history, this tracker is unbelievable again a huge huge help it's great for trading with rare cards like icons informs special items that are rare this is honestly incredible for trading with those cards so i highly recommend getting used to this and i really hope that that footpin adds it to mobile speaking of mobile i need to mention this to you guys as well make sure you download the footpin app on mobile right you just go to your app store type in footbin you basically get a lot of the same features uh you can do literally everything i think except they don't have the um they can't you, you can't go on here and do the, the sales history so um, if I go on Footbin, I can't do the sales history on the mobile. Maybe that's going to be coming. Um, but mobile is great as well. You can set, you can do Footbin Premium. There's a premium option on mobile where you can set up alerts, and it'll tell you, okay, let's say I bought that Renato Sanchez at 50, 40,000 coins. I want Footbin to alert me when he reaches 50 or 55,000 coins as his lowest buy now, and they will send you a little alert when that happens. So. Footbin Premium, again, not an ad, but um, it's very useful. It's like two quid, three quid, three dollars, two dollars. I think the you know rate's about the same. It's two bucks. It's two bucks for it. It's great. It's awesome. Worth it, uh, in my opinion. So last thing, I know I've talked about so much, but there's just so much this website. Indexes. Indexes are fantastic because it gives you a snapshot of a whole entire sector of the market. Think about like the real stock market, you think about um, cyclicals, you think about agriculture, you think about different sectors of the market. This is basically giving you a snapshot of those sectors. I love doing this for fodder. When SBCs come out, you will see fodder, boom, go up or a code comes out and people start investing, right? Or icons. I love watching the index icons on Friday mornings when people are panic selling their butts off for a new promo because new cards are coming out. Love the index icon. It's honestly even great to trade with, right? You can look in here and say, boom, okay, this uh, Boutra Guenyo card is down 16%, 71K. Let's look at the sales history. Did he sell at 80K earlier? 83K one time, uh, 88K. Okay, a lot of 60s. Okay, so maybe if I'm looking at this Butragueno, he's 71K right now. Maybe if I find one more undercut, get him in the 60s, then I know I can maybe sell him high 70s or low 80s, right? Boom. You just found a way to trade on FIFA 21 using the index. You can use index icons, special cards, ones to watches, UCL. They got it all, right? So t great, great, great stuff for research inside of here on the market section. And uh, I think I have one more tab. What is this? Oh, objectives. Under the XP tab up here at the top, this is actually so huge because you don't sometimes remember all of the objectives that you're trying to complete in a squad battles game. You go over here to Footbin, you click on the XP, go to objectives, find the one that you're doing, click the down arrow, boom, play and score at least one goal in 10 squad battles or rivals matches, play and score. Like if you're doing an, S or an objective and you kind of forget what's involved, you go to this, boom, and you can have it pulled up on your phone or on your computer or whatever right beside your screen that you're playing FIFA on in the game so that you can remember what you're doing. This was very helpful for me for doing objectives because it's very easy to forget. Wait, I have to assist, I have to score, and I have to do a, a cross with a defender. You know, all the crazy stuff that we have to do for objectives now, 
this is huge. So this is something I think is going to be big inside of FIFA 22 as well. But again, Footbin.com, the absolute goats. This is the number one website to use alongside of FIFA. And I just wanted to take you guys through some. That was not even all. There are so many things this website can do. Get on here, click around. Again, get familiar with it. Some of the new, if you're an experienced trader, get used to reading these these graphs again, right? Get used to looking at sales history. Get that trading mind at work. Without this website, so many people would be lost, man. They'd be lost just because this keeps track and record of prices, which is so helpful for a ton of people. But again, get familiar with it and get ready for FIFA 22 because this is gonna be your best friend when the game does come out to help you make some coins using Footbin. But if this video helped you at all today, make sure to smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.